Hi there, it's Nicole from Mama Elephant, and today I'm excited to share this card featuring only one stamp set, and I've also created a card using embossing and watercoloring and did absolutely no masking. And it's relatively easy to do as long as you have a small paintbrush, and I'm going to show you how. I'm gonna start with some of my floral images from the new Pretty Lovely stamp set, part of the January 2018 release. And what I like to do first is kind of lay out my first grouping of stamps and also get my spacing for my sentiment. Once I have that in place, I can really go from there. I know that I want the large floral to be in the foreground or in the forefront of the um, design here. And I also want to make sure that I leave room for one of the large scripty type greetings. And then I will go ahead and stamp the additional greetings to finish that sentiment on a separate piece of paper. I'm gonna start with my large floral and greeting and move the other images out of the way for just a moment. Go ahead and use a anti-static tool. This is a powder tool from EK Success all over this since I'm going to be doing quite a bit of embossing. This is gonna help keep some of those stray embossing flakes from sticking where I don't want them. I'm gonna ink up the greeting and the flower and press those in place right there on my piece of paper. This is a little scrap piece of paper I had. It's five and a half inches wide. I'm not exactly sure how tall. I didn't even measure it. Um, I am gonna use all scrap paper for my project here today, and I'm gonna show you how I kind of stretch the paper to make it work. A lot of times I'm left with all these little pieces after doing a larger background, and that makes it kind of hard, or there's not a lot you can do with that unless you're gonna maybe stamp and die cut them separately or um, other things. And so I like to find ways to use up all those little pieces of paper. The Bristol Smooth cardstock is also my absolute favorite for doing Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker watercoloring or other kinds of coloring on because it just goes on so smoothly and it makes a huge difference. If you have not been successful with these markers before, I highly recommend the Bristol Smooth cardstock. It is fantastic. I'm gonna clean off these stamps now, and then I am going to position my leafy image and the other floral stamp, the one that looks more like flower buds. So again, I'm gonna put this in my stamp positioner tool. This is the Tim Holtz stamp platform. And you can see that they're overlapping parts of the large floral image. I'm not going to mask this at all. I am gonna use my anti, uh, static powder tool again. Go ahead and ink these stamps up and press those in place. Now when I take this out and sprinkle on my white embossing powder, there's going to be a bunch of overlap. And I definitely don't want that overlap in my final card. What I'm gonna do is take a small paintbrush and I am going to brush away any of that embossing powder that overlaps the large flower. So it will appear that the two images I just stamped are behind the larger flower. It's not perfect. Um, I think in the finished photos, you can see a little bit of the one flower bud especially. However, I think if you didn't know that that was how this was created, you wouldn't notice it at all. Um, I think I'm, and other card makers are probably maybe a little more prone to noticing those kind of things. However, I think it really, maybe with a little bit darker inking and maybe brushing away that powder a little more in that particular area of that flower petal would have helped because really in all other areas of the design, you can't see it. So I've wiped that away. I went ahead and heat set these two images and I'm going to add two more. One is gonna overlap part of the greeting, and then I'll add some more leaves over to the right side of the card. I wanted to fill it in just a little bit more. I felt like it needed just a tiny bit um, more foliage to really kind of fill out the design. You could definitely leave it as is if you wanted to. So again, I'm just kind of moving my paper over a little bit so I can get that stamp positioned where I want it. 
and I'm going to stamp these two images and do the same step that I just did. So starting with my powder tool, inking up the images with Versamark, pressing those in place, adding some white embossing powder, and then brushing away any of the powder that overlaps the images I just stamped so that it appears that these images I just stamped are behind the sentiment and behind this second little grouping of florals. And I'm just taking my paintbrush and wiping away that embossing powder. It's kind of a little cheat way to do this, especially maybe if you're running short on time, maybe if you're not a huge fan of masking and cutting out masks. Um, this is a little time saver and hopefully it's a little trick that will help you. So I'll go ahead and heat set these two images and then I'm ready to start coloring. Now the difficult thing I think about the video for when you emboss white on white cardstock is that it's really hard to see those images as I start to um, watercolor those. I also want to mention I did try to stamp my sentiments on the background, the Hava um, and Day sentiments from the Pretty Lovely stamp set. And my thinking was because I'm going to watercolor the background when I'm done and add just a really light wash of blue that they might show up. They did not. So what I'm going to do, and it was kind of my initial plan was to do what I ended up doing, but I thought, well, this might work, but it didn't. So I like to leave it in there just to kind of share with you my hits and misses as I'm creating a card. I will stamp these sentiments separately on another piece of white paper, white cardstock, using a black ink that's really gonna show up because the word lovely is gonna show up, but these two are just so small, these two little uh, words or phrases are so small that it's just not going to be visible and I think it really gets lost in the design if I had left it as is. I'll just cover those up with my little sentiment strips so I don't have to redo all my stamping. Now, as I start to add color, the image and the florals really start to take shape. Adding the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers to florals like this and then blending out with a water brush pen for, I call it kind of faux watercolor or cheater watercolor because I am not a really strong watercolor at all. As much as I'd love to be, I just have not practiced enough with the medium and I'm not comfortable enough just watercoloring. However, I feel that the zigs really give me that same sort of look and I find that I really enjoy this kind of creating. So however you personally like to create is absolutely fine. There is no right or wrong way in crafting and I absolutely love that. I also am a huge fan of the embossed lines with watercoloring because I tend to be a messy watercolor and I get outside the lines a lot. So that embossed line helps hold the ink in, which really helps me because it doesn't go anywhere and it kind of stays all nice and pooled into those embossed areas, which helps with the watercolor look as well. That water brush pin is the medium water brush pin from Simon Says Stamp and I absolutely love it. Now, something I've shared before in videos and I just did it just now is I had to clean up a couple places where I smudged my ink. I got my hand in it on accident and one of the things about Bristol Smooth cardstock is it's pretty forgiving. I wet a clean paper towel and dabbed away as much of the ink as possible. Um, I don't think I could get quite all of it, but it was green, it blended into the blue, and it didn't really bother me that much. But you can wipe away a great deal of it. Don't rub the paper, because it will eventually pill. But I like to kind of dab at it until I can get most of that ink up if I have a little mistake like that. Next, I scribbled the light blue marker on an acrylic block and I simply wet it down with my water brush pen and I'm picking that up and doing a really light wash of light blue all over the background. You can kind of see the words have a show up there in the background, but it's not great. Now I let this dry completely. You could also speed this up with a heat tool if you wanted to. I let mine sit and air dry completely. And then I am taking some brushed pewter distress paint and watering it down on an acrylic block, 
picking it up with a small tip paintbrush and flicking little bits of silver all over the background. I'm gonna do a couple of silver gilded flake borders for my card, and so these little silver flecks are gonna tie in nicely with that. I'm also gonna take Picket Fence Distress Paint, wet it down, and flick it all over the background as well. These drops are not gonna show up as much, but they will add just a little bit of nice distressing to the background. Again, I let this sit and air dry completely. Then I stamped those greetings, have a and day, on a separate piece of white cardstock, trim them into thin strips, and I'm attaching them right over the, the phrases I stamped earlier. I used a little 1 8 inch score tape because those are pretty tiny little pieces of cardstock. And my watercoloring here is pretty well done. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my Tonic Studios mat here. This is what I used for all my painting. It cleans up beautifully. And I love that it's white. Um, I think for me, it's just a great background to work on. I like the white a lot better than a brown. Next, I am taking 1 4th and 1 8th inch score tape and adding borders to my watercolor panel. And this is just a really quick and easy way to add some sticky borders to whatever project it might be, and then the gilding flakes stick to them perfectly. I have a whole bunch of different widths, or not a whole bunch, but several widths of score tape, and they work great for this. So if you want wider borders or thin ones, I'm doing a mix. I've got um, a little bit wider and then two thin borders here, so two at the top and one at the bottom. I felt like that kind of worked the best with this particular design. There's not as much going on at the top. I did not want to cover up all my beautiful watercoloring or faux watercoloring. So I did the thin border at the bottom and a thin and a thicker at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off the backing paper for my score tape now. And I'm going to take the silver gilding flakes. This is um, from Nouveau, and I'm just going to kind of press those into the sticky material. In fact, I, then I picked up as much of the excess as I could easily. This is messy. This is There's just really no way around this being messy. However, once I use this blender tool to remove all of that excess and get those really beautiful gilded borders, the best way I have found to clean this up is with Swiffer dry cloths. The dry cloths kind of serve as a magnet for all of these little gilding teeny tiny flakes that you really can't put back into the container. So the Swiffer dry cloths are amazing cleanup tools for gilding flakes. I use it for embossing powder. Just a really quick and easy way to clean up this mess. And I love the way gilding flakes look. They're um, embossing powder does not give the same look, and I just really think it's so, so pretty. So I'm going to use my Swiffer dry cloth now to pick up all of this mess. And then for my little cheat for my background, I tried to find a color of cardstock that would work because I didn't like the white. I felt like the silver borders needed something to pop against, and the white wasn't working, my cardstock just seemed too bold, and so my solution was to ink up this little scrap of Bristol Smooth cardstock with Blueprint Sketch Distress Ink. Then I'm going to distress it even more with water from a distress sprayer, blot it dry with a paper towel, but this piece of cardstock is obviously not wide enough to fit the front of an A2 sized card. In fact, I think it's probably the other half of what I just used to watercolor my panel. So I'm going to cut it in half and on my card base, I'm going to adhere it at the top and the bottom. So this is a little cheat and a way to use up some scraps of paper. Instead of getting a piece of paper and inking it all up and most of it being lost behind my border, I'm instead going to adhere this top and bottom piece. And there's a little section in between. That's perfectly fine. It's no big deal because it's going to be covered up with this panel. And I decided to pop my panel up with some foam adhesive. I am being generous with my foam adhesive. You definitely do not have to add as much as I do. Um, I know some of you really hate when I uh, 
I shouldn't say hate, but do not like when I use so much foam tape. I'm gonna tell you why I did it, especially here. When watercoloring, it sometimes causes the paper to curl up. So the more foam tape I use, the better that it's going to lie flat. It just gives it that security. I don't have any of that weird curling up that you sometimes get with watercolored pieces of cardstock. I didn't tape this down when I watercolored it, so it definitely curled and warped a little bit. So that's why I like to use plenty of foam tape to hold it nice and flat. So there is my card. At this point, pretty well done. I am going to take some Morning Dew Nouveau Crystal Drops and add dew drops all over my background, over some of the flower petals, over some of the leaves. I love using the Morning Dew for this. I like the look of dew drops on floral cards, especially cards that have been watercolored. Um, I just like the little clear look. They really blend into the card nicely. They don't add a a ton they don't add like a distraction to it really they just add a beautiful dimensional embellishment all over the background i'm going to let this set and dry completely for 24 hours and my card will be finished thanks for joining me today for this watercolored card featuring embossing without masking using the mama elephant pretty lovely stamp set the supplies i use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on youtube here are a couple more videos featuring Mama Elephant stamps and dies that you might be interested in. Please subscribe for weekly card making and stamping videos. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.